Hello, people of Facebook. Uh, I'm Rob Schultze, as you probably know, since you're friends with me on Facebook. This is uh, my studio, and we're going to shoot some medium format film today. Uh, so since a lot of film labs are you know, closed or limited in operations today, and right now because of the current situation, um, I'm going to be shooting digital alongside uh, our film. So you can see results immediately, and then down the road, I'll share the pictures of the um, of the, of the finished product. So today what we're going to shoot is we're going to shoot this nice vase, which has been in our house forever. Um, I don't really know where it came from um, or, you know, it, we've never, I don't think we've ever put any flowers in it or anything. Uh, but this is what we're going to shoot, our nice little still life. We have some nice uh, color here, some nice contrast. It is glass and glass is a bit tricky to shoot. Um, but we're not going to worry too much about that today. I'm just going to focus mostly on showing you the usage with the film. Uh, yeah, so the last couple, well, I guess last week, pretty much I streamed almost every day. Uh, I was just doing some like showcasing of how a commercial photographer or a professional photographer might work in a studio. Uh, we're fortunate enough to have our own studio space here in San Jose. And this is, uh, this is kind of what I've been doing the past time, and I appreciate you guys tuning in. It's uh, really nice. All right, so I'm going to show you, first off, uh, the equipment that we're using today. It's all film. We've got a medium format, 120 millimeter uh, RZ67. And um, I have a 35 millimeter camera, too, uh, but I'm not going to use it today. I just wanted to kind of show the differences, uh, because medium format is quite a bit different than uh, 35 millimeter film. Flip this over. <laughs> Off to a good start. There we go. All right, so hopefully that is right side ish up for you guys. So, what we have here. Um, we have some, some film, some 120 millimeter film. Uh, this one has already been used because you can see it says that it's at the end. So we're going to put that aside. That was something I shot to finish up the roll that was in the camera. So this is a 35 millimeter camera and you people, some of you people might be a little more familiar with this one. Um, this is probably what you used or your parents used uh, growing up. Just a simple 35 millimeter film, you load it in here, run the film across the side here, load it in. Now the difference between this camera and like other film cameras that maybe you would have used at the time is that this one's a bit more rugged, it's a more pro professional model. Uh, it's an older camera but it was, it's the Nikon F2, it's pretty much the like camera that pros used uh, back in the 80s and 90s. Um, because it's super rugged, super durable, it's fully manual. The only thing that takes a battery is a light meter, which, you know, if, if you don't know what a light meter is, it just, it measures, it measures the light in the space so you can get an accurate exposure. And it tells you the settings through the camera here, and detects uh, the light through here. Okay, so we're not going to use the 35 millimeter today, like I said, because um, I'm it's, it's not, it, people have seen it before. You guys most likely have seen the use of it. So I'm going to focus on the Mimi RZ67. Uh, oh, you know what? Actually, I'm going to get something else here to make this a little more interesting. Hold on. All right, so what's really cool about this camera is that uh, it's modular, so you can remove parts and have different pieces of it attached at a time. It actually has two different film backs. I think I have three total, but I have two with me today. Um, this one is more of a rectangular frame that you get, kind of closer to 35 millimeter, and this is a square frame. And this actually comes off the back here. Release that. And actually your roll of 120 millimeter film is right in here. Um, I got this camera a couple years ago on eBay 
We got the whole thing with a bunch of lenses and backs for like a couple hundred bucks. It was a really good deal at the time. Even considering how old it is, these cameras are pretty bulletproof. Like you won't, I won't ever need to replace this. I can, this will probably outlast me. It's not going back together here though. Okay, so I'm gonna remove this on top here and give us a different viewfinder. This is gonna be a mirror piece that we will be able to see down. Oh, actually you can see it right now. It's kind of hard to see, but that's, um, that's what the lens is seeing. That's me. <laughs> uh, let me put the attachment on because you'll be able to see it a little bit better. Cool. All right. So we're gonna use that. This is a 110 millimeter uh, lens. Uh, these tend to be slightly wider than uh, 35 millimeter lenses. So like this one, I believe is a 50 millimeter lens. I think 50, that's the filter size. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is a 50 millimeter. millimeter. Um, this would, if, if you put a, it's the equivalent of having a 110 millimeter lens, which is actually what this is. So this is essentially a normal lens. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load film into this guy, the, our, manual, our manual back, and I'm going to shoot the rest of this guy as well. We're going to shoot some 400 ISO Ilford Delta. And I'll show you guys how this gets loaded. Um, it's not a super common thing to use film cameras like this anymore, uh, even at the professional level. Delta 400, this is, this is the, the bee's knees right here. So it seems a little counterintuitive, but how you load these cameras, um, you wanna load it On this side, it's not snapping into place here. There we go. What you want to do is you want to load it, you want to roll this around and insert it, the little tab, right here into the take up spool. Not winding how I want it to wind. Moment. There it goes. Until you basically see little arrows on the top and bottom here. That is my indication that I should stop winding it because it's about to uh, expose the film. So I'm gonna put this back together here. Wind it until I can't wind it anymore. And there we go, it stopped. You can see there's a little one 
right here. So that is indicating our first frame. Sometimes these are a little stiff, these pieces, but it's all good to go. So like I said before, this is a manual film back. So every time I take a picture, I have to manually advance it here and then reset the shutter on the camera here. Because once the shutter opens, it just like, you have to cock it. It's like a, like a firearm. Uh, so you have to cock it here. You have to advance the film. You have to unlock the film uh, by pushing this little tab in here. Uh, you can do multiple exposures, like really cool ghost images um, with this if you want uh, by, utilize, by taking advantage of the manual advance, um, but you probably wouldn't do that too much in like a commercial situation um, or at all because we don't shoot film anymore. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna flip this back up and kind of get things set in place. Oh, that was dumb, actually. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to shoot digital alongside of it so you can see it because uh, obviously we can't get things developed quickly right now um, or instantly like with a digital camera. But uh, we're going to kind of show you how this works. Now, I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see some of this stuff, but we're going to try it. Oh, that did not work. Oh man, that is really tough. <laughs> So we're not going to be able to see both at the same time. So I need to think of a, a better place to put this. But as you can see, if I turn on my live view on my D850 here. You can see that we're going to shoot this little vase. Looks real nice. Um, so let's start by just taking a couple test shots here. We're, we're set at F4 at 1 15th of a second at ISO 400. I have a feeling that's going to be a little bit bright. Uh, oh yeah, so I want to point out too that the ISO in the film in this camera is uh, 400 as well. So uh, we just need, want to make sure we match all that stuff up. So let's take one shot here. Um, that's pretty good. Uh, it's a little bit I think it could seem to be a little bit brighter. Since we're at 400 ISO, um, we're gonna just use other means to uh, get the proper exposure here. So we're gonna go down to one-tenth of a second shutter speed. That's really slow, so I'm glad we're on tripods here today. But even at that speed, at that sh slow of a shutter speed, you can still get uh, shakiness uh, just from the, the the mirror flipping inside the camera. So now with the medium format camera, <laughs> we, what do you see um, or hear? I guess how loud this thing is. It's super cool. Like it's it's a really cool machine. Uh, so let me just get this out of the way, and we'll just kind of focus on the film camera. <laughs> Let me know if this is not a good looking angle for you guys. You probably can't see much that I'm seeing here. 
Uh, you can kind of see it. Yeah, it's super dark. And part of that also is because of my own ambient light in this space. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm seeing right now. It's such a magical thing, like the way this camera focuses and the way uh, it shows it on the screen because the film plane is so huge and the detail is so immaculate that it just, it, it has such a sense of depth to it. So I can adjust my focus a little bit here, as you can see. I'm having a hard time seeing it myself to focus it. Boy, it is not, even this camera's not focusing. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna move this up so I can get a good beat on the focus here. Um, Okay, this is getting complicated. I'm gonna move this out of the way here. Now, for the time being, I'm gonna choose not to light this with anything. Oh boy. Yeah, I'm going to choose not to light this with anything. We're just going to use the natural light that's available here. We have these great big reflections on the window here. So that's kind of fun. Uh, you probably wouldn't want to have that in a product studio setting. Uh, we would probably cover these windows and stuff that are, that are here just to control the light a little bit better during the daytime. But we're going to try a couple uh, just like this. Okay, so my shot is in focus. Uh, <laughs> I know I just moved you, but I want to bring you close again so you can hear and appreciate this machine when I fire it, because it's, um, it's impressive. So something I have to do, which you won't see uh, many film cameras have this feature, or you won't have any digital cameras have this feature, really is uh, I have to remove a protective slide from it so that I can actually expose the film because it's meant to be there as a fail safe. So I'm shooting right now, I've got film loaded. What if I accidentally take off my back? Oh no, but look, it's protected by a dark slide. So that way uh, you won't accidentally expose your film. So the dark slide is located right here. Pop this out and the film is ready to be exposed. All right, everybody hold your, hold your breath. Cool, okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to re-meter stuff because I was using the meter settings off of my digital camera. And it should be pretty close, but I want to make sure that we have it exposed properly. So I'm going to use my actual uh, tool that was designed for this uh, that came out. It's called a light meter. So we basically just set our ISO to the ISO of the film, which is 400 ISO here. And then let me just test it out right so they're saying that I can shoot 1 30th of a second at f2.8. Uh, and before, my other exposure was 1 60th of a second at f2, okay, f4. So I was pretty close. One thirtieth of a second at f2.8. Actually, I'm going to keep this nearby. Uh, 
Um, I'm going to try and show you uh, what I'm seeing here through the viewfinder. So what I can see here, I've got my camera all set. We've got our um, viewfinder on top here, a top-down viewfinder, waist level viewfinder, they actually refer to it as. It's my subject right here. Let's see if I can show you guys. Try this again. There we go. It's tough because I got to block the reflection on the ceiling. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Let me see if I can show you what the focusing is like with this. That's not my phone throwing it out of focus. That is the camera itself. Okay, I'm going to move you out of the way because I'm holding the phone really weird. Okay, so to take our next shot, we're set at f2.8, one thirtieth of a second here, which is just what the light meter corrected me because before I was at a slightly higher shutter speed. Uh, so that it's good to have both. It's good to shoot both higher than the light meter and lower than the light meter just to make sure that you have a shot. They call that bracketing. Um, all right, let's take a look here. All right, dark slide out, camera set. Right. So one thing that's cool about a lot of these older cameras, uh, specifically the Mummy RZ67. Now I realize you guys can't see me that well. Sorry. I'm just going to move you over here for now. Actually, let me go back here. So as you can see, I have it all labeled and stuff uh, for myself. So what's fun about this is that this picture is primarily set to be uh, a horizontal image, but let's say you want to shoot a vertical image, right? Like you don't want to be trying to hold this inside like that. That's just insane, right? So what this will, will do here instead, we'll set the camera to rotate and we can actually rotate the film back and set it back to manual and shoot a vertical image. And that's that's how you do that with medium format because it would be unwieldy. It would be very cumbersome uh, if, if you had to turn the camera on its side. So let's do a shot like that quick. 130th at f2.8. So 400 to remove the dark slide. Oh, yeah. This is always a problem for me with this particular um, with this particular tripod. I have to <laughs> – this is my mistake. This, the, uh, the arm gets in the way. Uh, when I have to remove the dark slide, so I have to do that. Or I can remove the dark slide first. But All right, so then we're going to shoot this. Um, let me see if I can show you the inside through the viewfinder here, actually, because it might be a little bit better. There we go. Look at that. How magical that is. So this is um, set at a vertical format now. But you can't really see that too well here. Sorry about that. Okay, so we're going to do one more, uh, one more vertical like this because we can. We've got the space for that. I'm going to go 160th this time because I was 130th before. I just want to make sure I cover all my bases. I'm getting a little bit of light make on one side. Interesting. 
Well, we'll see. I haven't had any light leak problems with this camera yet, so we'll see uh, how this goes. God, I love that sound. So let's say now we want to rotate back. So what I'm going to do, just for safety's sake, because I don't want to drop the camera, I'm going to actually remove it from the tripod and set it down over here. And rotate our back into the original position. Put it upside in here like this. Now, put this back here. Keep shooting. So let's say that I want to change my film type. I have black and white film in here right now. Let's say I want to shoot, or wait, do I have black and white in here? Yeah, I have black and white film in here right now. Let's say I want to switch to a, a different type of film, a color film. Uh, so this is where the removable backs uh, come in handy quite a bit. You can pull this off. You can grab a different back, which I have loaded with a different uh, type of film. Give me a second. Oh, that's right. This has a different film plane separator on it. Let me take that off. Okay. All right, now the film type is square. Sorry about that, it looks like I dropped out for a minute there. So with the new back on here, this is a uh, different film type. This is a color film. Uh, so we gotta adjust a couple settings here. We wanna change uh, our light meter to reflect the appropriate ISO, which I believe is 100. Now let's check this once again. So at F2.8, it's saying that I have to shoot <laughs> at one eighth of a second. So that's super slow. Here we go. Oh yeah, dark slide out. I always forget the dark slide on this one because this, this back is more is less manual uh, than the other back. That one is a full manual back. I have to advance the film on the film back itself as well as recock the camera. But this one is a bit more advanced and I always forget, uh, for some reason I do better with the more complicated one. So I'm gonna pull on my digital camera for a second and just do a couple more like this. So what were we at? We were at F2.8 at 1 eighth of a second, 400 ISO. Was it 400? I set to 100 ISO. One eighth of a second. Pretty good. It's actually a little bit dark. I'm surprised. Um, it's looking better. So that tells me then that I should probably shoot this a little bit brighter because this the digital camera is saying uh, that I'm a little tiny bit underexposed. So I'm going to move this out of the way.
Nope. Oh my god. Right, there we go. Hmm, maybe we should like set up a angle here where you're kind of staring down the barrel. <laughs> there we go. That's kind of cool. <laughs> sort of. Well, actually, probably the other side is probably more interesting because it has the manual piece on it there. <laughs> I'm spending more time setting up camera angles than actually taking the pictures, guys. So I'm going to go a quarter of a second at f2.8 here. Oop. The spam will come through. This back has always been a little bit harder to advance. Um, I'm not really sure why that is. Uh, I guess it probably has more moving parts inside of it than my manual back. So that it advances at the same time as everything else. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, rotate the back here. Oh, wait. i got to remove the... Dark slide first. Now do a, a vertical shot. It's fun because I can actually see myself uh, in the reflection on this thing. If I can wave to myself. Oh, actually, I gotta wave with this hand. It shows up a little bit better. Okay, so let's rotate this guy back. Put the dark slide back in. Let's do one more. Actually, I'm going to do one more. I'm going to do one more rotated, actually. Oh, yeah. All right, so this is kind of it for my film setup, or at least my, you know, pro-level film setup. Let me just move the camera back here so we can have a little chat. Yeah, so this is, this is sort of my, my pride and joy when it comes to my, my film camera collections. Um, I... I had to find it on eBay a while ago because I know that in the late 80s and early 90s they used the RC67 for a lot of magazine stuff, and um, I was able to get the, like everything, the lenses, and I had like probably three or four different lenses and like three different backs for like 500 bucks for everything. So really cheap um, compared to what they used to cost, and the new digital medium formats are like 20, 30, 40 thousand dollars a piece easily. Uh, so this is much more affordable. Uh, it's kind of more fun. It's, it's, it's a bit of a hobby, a bit of a money sink because uh, people don't really want to pay for film development anymore. So you have to pay to get it developed and it takes longer and yeah, it's just not really done that much anymore. Digital is the way to go. So this is kind of like a fine art, you know, artist camera at this point. 
ah you still get really crazy like definition and colors and sharpness with this camera so i do occasionally get to use it for jobs because like some clients of mine ah kind of just give me full reign and that's really fun because i can do fun stuff like this i can build crazy sets like you guys may have seen me doing some other behind the scenes videos in the space here and it's just a lot of fun um but yeah it's a lot more it's a lot more rigid today with ah with digital ironically so considering you can do anything i think people have gotten used to the fact that you can do anything so having started out on film i think was a huge benefit for me because i was able to kind of problem solve what was in front of me instead of being like oh we'll fix it in post not saying that all digital photographers do that um but that is a mindset of a lot of people so anyway um i think we're going to call it a day here um i'm glad you guys i hope you guys enjoyed my um fun nerdy stuff speaking of nerdy stuff too i'm going to be doing probably a sort of a a screencast or like something in my office all right i'm going to be doing that later either tonight or this week sometime um just to kind of have a little fun and show off some cool stuff that i have around the house including cameras and you know old films and records and that sort of thing anyway uh this is kind of funny because like i can say smile for the camera but i know you can't it's not going to see you <laughs> it just sees me looking like an idiot but i'm going to do this anyway so watch right here because you can actually see the shutter open uh close and then i have to manually open back open it back up There we go. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. Stay safe out there. Don't talk to anyone. Don't go near anyone. Just stay in your house. You know, be be like be like a working artist. Just stay inside all day, all month. Bye. Thanks for watching.